Hello and welcome back to Urbeck. I first covered this game back in April, uh, about four months ago, and back then it was Alpha 1. It's now Alpha 4, so there's been some decent improvements, some changes made. I did play the game offline during Alpha 2 to look at some of the changes then, uh, but then I ran out of time for Alpha 3, and now Alpha 4 is up. So we're here. Uh, this is a city builder game uh, from the studio Estudios Kremlinos, uh, which is a development group in Chile. Uh, Chile. Um, and like all good city builders, um, you just build a city. Uh, it's got a lot of SimCity vibe to it. It's got you know some other some other vibe to it but it's got some interesting um individual in, or unique components that um i haven't seen in other games uh, the way the buildings upgrade the way that the uh different buildings near each other affect different things is a totally a uh, new concept as far as at least the games that i've played um a new to me kind of thing um and they've added a lot since then um in that respect so um as the first thing you can see, or rather hear, is there is music now. Uh, there was there were sound effects back in Alpha One, but uh, there was there were no, there was no music. So now we have controls to adjust uh, various sound effects, and I think it's good on the music level. It looks like it's right there in the sweet spot where I like to have the music in a game uh, in in the OBS meter. But if it's too loud or too quiet, we can always adjust it later. I wanted to talk about a couple of the of the new features that have come out in Alpha 4 and then possibly take a look back at Alpha 3 as well, and 2 as well. Um, if, if you recall, we had, an, and I'm scrolling through a web page so the music dies because it doesn't have uh, maintained focus in the music, but um, we had like the system of parks and um, happiness, uh, as you can see here on the, on the, the templates or the, uh, the the background of the main screen, the menu screen here. There's all these different parks and they can affect the happiness and the uh, level of the different houses. But now there are different types of beauty rather than just parks. So now you can have uh, a sporting area, which we had the soccer fields before the football pitches. Um, and you can have green areas like parks. You can have nightlife like nightclubs. There's uh, churches. And there's different uh, cultural components as well. All new buildings that we can we can either build or upgrade to to enhance different neighborhoods. And that's one of the new kind of uh, aspects of the game is the uh, there's different paths for different neighborhoods. So uh, if you build a nightclub in a in a neighborhood, it'll become a, a nightlife neighborhood. Uh, for example, uh, you know, you have a bar or a or a cabaret kind of thing. Uh, the green areas like the um, like the park type of things uh, have a different path. Sporting areas like the football pitch slash tennis or uh, soccer fields. There's things like tennis courts and some different multi-sport courts as well. Um, there's there's churches and chapels, and then you can make like a religious neighborhood almost, which is interesting. Um, and then there's a cultural path of things like bookstores and libraries and uh, artistic components. Um, and then there are things, they have added police stations, uh, bus stops, and parking lots into the game as well. And um, there are also anarchist or hippie communes uh, type of things as well. There's there's rebel houses, uh, anarchist bars, um, a self-managed bookstore, which is, I'm not sure how that, what that means exactly. And then there's an anarchist commune that those can, can grow into, which is... Um, which is an interesting, uh, interesting neighborhood, and um, and then back in Alpha Three, uh, they were working in that direction with things like um, uh, adding in. Or now there's Alpha Two. They added in the desert biome, uh, playing through the temperate biome and winning it, uh, so solving all of the uh, all the tasks. Uh, unlocks the desert biome, and as you can see, there are more biomes coming. I don't think they're available yet. I'm trying to remember. If they're available yet or not um, I didn't I don't think I saw them um, update 3 added some some camera view uh, angle a different camera view angle which is like a perspective a 3d perspective we're gonna take a look at that um, actually it's part of the tutorial now and um, there was one other thing in update 3 that I wanted to point out um, but I can't remember what it was now
Oh well, I've forgotten what it was. There was a couple of there was a couple of things in update three that were that were new and different, and then update two was just like more content that was added after update one, which is why I didn't cover it online. Other than adding the desert biome, uh, there wasn't anything else. I thought about which I did. I played through the temperate biome and won it, and then I they planned on playing into the desert, and then I um I didn't. Um, it ran out of time, I think, at that time. So anyways, we're going to start a new map. I think we'll just go with the default settings, a medium map, temperate biome. The desert's a bit harder, and I think we'll use the, um, it'll make, it'll make life a little bit, make the series a little bit easier playing the, uh, playing, playing the temperate biome, especially to get to all the new stuff and take a look at it. Uh, we'll start with standard starting resources. We could do inland or coastal. Um, I think we'll do inland just so we have more land to work with, presumably at least. And we'll take the default river size as well. Um, I'm not sure entirely what the river is used for. I did see a water wheel uh, power plant option in when I when I launched into test. So um, there's that option, which I'm assuming goes on the river. So let's go ahead and jump into the game and uh, get started. So... The tutorial starts out the same way, uh, warning you this is an alpha and uh, um, and that there's plenty more things planned, WASD and Q&E for rotation, U to show and hide the interface, it's great for screenshots, C to switch the camera. Now looking at this, um, it goes from an isometric camera, which is the way we were playing it, to a 3D camera, which gives you a 3D rotation. And uh, the 3D zoom isn't any different, but like you don't, you can't zoom in or you can't adjust the pitch. I don't think. Uh, I don't think so. No, but um, you can at least have a a 3D rotation as opposed to the uh, isometric rotation, which is a nice feature. And then uh, now we get in. That was an added added aspect of the tutorial. Now we get into the uh, to the tutorial again. We need to build six roads, ending at. A forest. I think maybe we'll just start. Mm, there's a lot of trees on this map. I think we'll start over here. Uh, maybe here. We'll start here. And again, we'll just build a road. Uh, six tiles long. There we go. Next. And then we need to build six fields. Uh, you can go like that. And then I think it's six houses next. Like that. Houses are, of course, three spaces from the road or less. Fields are five or less, according to the previous tutorial uh, step. We can use the magnifying glass to see what the information is on the tile. And as you can see, there are quite a few upgrades available here to a wooden hut. Um, we have seen about half of these previously. Village house, wealthy village house, and villas. I don't think we saw a mansion. We might have seen poor suburbs. We did see iron miners' houses. Um... Coal mining is a new thing. Um, mansions are new, I think. I don't know where the yawn's coming from. Sorry about that. And the fisherman houses. And we can also right click to see the same thing. Uh, and we can use the bulldozer tree to bulldoze just uh, to destroy buildings or trees. What is required to get a new building? Houses build a lumber camp in the forest adjacent to your settlement. The trees are replanted. We know about the lumber camp. Let's go ahead and just put it here. Um, and then we can continue. And we can find information about a store resource by hovering over its icon in the top corner. So we have food, work, and wood again. We also have population and happiness again. Now try to reach 100 population. The top right, you can see the town's current population and their happiness. Keep in mind that houses will only appear if your town has a surplus of food. Right, okay, so let's uh, destroy this. And because uh, one-off trees aren't that interesting build the that there and then we can build some more fields here and i think our f it's fine we'll build out a little bit more field too a bit more in the road category here i think we'll make a road going this way also Roads are free to build, I think. Yeah, roads are free to build. And the roads automatically upgrade uh, from a road to a rural road, and then they can become paved roads, super nice roads, and nice rural roads. And the roads can become nice roads. 
Uh, I think those are the ones that would be like in town kind of thing. Uh, a few more houses should do it. Let's do another six. We don't need that many, but that should do it. And we are spending a lot of work uh, compared to the amount we're producing, but the houses help. Houses produce work. The wooden huts do. Uh, we have we have a lot of wooden huts here. One, two, three, four, five times three is fifteen. I don't know if that's going to get built or not, so I'm hesitating there. Plus five is 20. So each wooden hut's providing 10 work, um, which is 10 work per tile. So these ones that are four tiles here, they produce 40 work. It doesn't tell you that because it's about the generic block, um, but they do produce 10 work per tile. Fields produce, let's see, that's five by five, which is 15. Uh, that's 35 divided by 15 is not an even number. It says, oh, produces 14. Actually, it is an even number. I lied. <laughs> 350 divided by 15. No. That's 25, not 35. Jeez, I'll be Wally. Divided by 15. Yeah. They produce 14 apiece. So you have to be careful that you, you make sure you provide enough for everything. Wait, 350 production in, oh geez, I did the number, I did the math wrong again. Uh, 350 divided by 25 is 14, there we go. Correct math, Wally, correct math. Okay, so we've reached our 100 population marks at 126. Uh, houses only appear if your town has a surplus of food, so we obviously increased the, uh, increased the the uh, food that's coming in. We probably need to increase the wood that's coming in as well. By pressing control, you can view your city from an inhabitant's point of view. So we can get down here into uh, first person mode and we can walk around. WSD moves us around. Uh, mouse is to turn. And then control, uh, uh, left click to ascend, right click to descend. And then we can mouse wheel to slow down and speed up the walking speed. And then control takes me back. I, I like that it has that... Uh, switch back to isometric, I think. Oop, isometric. Oh. Wait, wasn't the isometric doing 25% or 90 degree turns before? I don't know. Click on the farm icon in the left menu. Uh, the next thing here is a farmhouse. We need to have 200 population in order to unlock the farmhouse. So, as you can see, more buildings are unlocked throughout the game. So I want to also do look at one other thing in the options. Uh, as part of the sort of beta or testing option, you can show all locked buildings. You don't get access to them, but you can show all locked buildings, which gives housing is all done as upgrades, which is interesting. But we can get a red bridge, a green bridge, and a bus stop uh, here as part of the road options. Uh, under fields here, we can get the farmhouse, we can get a tenant farmer, a landlord's house, and a grain silo. There are a ton of different landmarks. These are a lot of the ones that I mentioned. Sorry about that, geez. There's a lot of ones that I mentioned earlier uh, that lead to the different uh, neighborhoods and communities. Uh, there are a lot of industry, industry buildings. I was gonna say industrial, then I read industry and stopped. Uh, the water mill, as I mentioned before, uh, actually doesn't need to be put on the river. Interesting. Dock was probably put on the on the river sea okay and then coal mines iron mines um oh no i guess coal mines are still magic they still pull the coal out of the ground everywhere but maybe the houses next to the coal mines turn into those coal houses things like that a lot of different a lot of different options here um there are a lot of options here for the uh for the the decorations the the parks and uh we'll get to those uh, eventually but I'm gonna I'm gonna uncheck that so that we don't have them all here crowding us out so we need to get to 200 population short story long we need to get to 200 population uh, let's work our way this way the trees auto delete when you build over them now which is really really nice uh, let's do three like this and we're gonna need some fields here momentarily those don't interesting so the roads can clear the trees but the fields cannot and i think the houses did as well 
Now I don't even remember. I thought there was a there is game speed controls down here too, which I think there weren't before. Um, interesting. That's just a that half speed must be half speed. So we can increase our speed, which is good. Um, plus and minus on the uh, numpad, do that. So when we get to the later stages of the game, which was a problem that I had in the last series, the feature series that I did, uh, when you get to the later stages, the, the, the space between them is so long that uh, it was kind of un, uh, unable to be handled well with the uh, with the game as it was, but maybe we'll be a little better off now. Build at least two farmhouses. They produce a large amount of food while consuming nothing. Displayed areas can help you find where you can build the, the farmhouse. You can see the restriction on the left side menu. So this is a, um, we have to have no farmhouse within a five tile radius, which is the outer radius. Uh, and we have to have at least 12 farms in a three tile radius. So I'm gonna put this, uh, I think like right here, maybe. Um, although we could, no, we gotta be closer. We gotta be closer to the road. I think we'll go actually, um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I think I want to go out two more. Can I make this work better? I think I want it to be a bit closer to the road, like in this area someplace. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So if I could put a road here going that way. I think I want this farmhouse to be right here. Uh, right, right there, we'll do it right there. Right there where that tree is. And now also when you delete a, a tile out of a two or a four block, it only deletes that one instead of deleting the whole thing, which is really nice also. Do that there. I'm gonna move this um, this this lumber, lumber camp under the side of the road. Oh, that's right, we can't put it there yet lumber camp and then we also have the lumberjack cabin which is becoming available soon as well and it uh it upgrades or it's it provides it provides more um more more it provides power whereas the lumber camp provides wood Let's do, it was eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, yeah. Do two here. I want to build a road here now. Not that way. We're just gonna knock these trees down. Smattering of trees don't really matter much. And then I can put in another uh, farmhouse right there. And those radically increased our food production. So we can support a lot more houses now, which is really nice. Actually, you know what? I'm changing my mind again on where I want that lumber camp. I'm gonna put it right there in the middle of the forest. And I think I will take out some of these houses here. Let's do this actually, or not these houses, these trees for more houses. We'll build a road there for later purposes. And this can go here. And I didn't want to build this this big. <laughs> one, two, three. Yeah, I need to take away one of these sets and put the road here. Uh, I'm putting in some more housing that is right here. Oh, I did, did this one. High keys are displayed be between brackets when hovering over a button. For example, to quickly build a farmhouse, you can press the F key, then the two key. So we have farms for F and then farmhouse is two. Select a magnifying glass icon and click on a wooden hut. You'll be presented with several upgrade paths. Clicking on any upgrade path will show you its respective requirements. For now, let's focus on a village house, so click on it. The village house needs to have power. 300 population, and then power. We just hit 300 population, which unlocked village house and lumberjack cabin. Uh, and some density. So we need to build a lumberjack cabin close to the lumber camp to produce energy from wood. Lumberja oh, and by the way, uh, the lumberjack cabins now in this version uh, consume 
wood to produce energy as opposed to consuming the trees directly. So let's, uh, let's bulldoze this as well. And we'll put that lumberjack cabin in. Oops, right there. Remember to make sure that no resource has a negative production rate. It will marked red when this is the case. Otherwise, some constructions may not appear or may be abandoned. Only a few blocked constructions are shown so as so as not to overwhelm you with options. That's what we oh we did that already. I didn't know this. I didn't get this far into the into the new tutorial. So we turned that on and then turned it back off again. Now that the village houses are, are, are unlocked and you have energy, your wooden huts will automatically be upgraded. Now houses give more happiness to your inhabitants. You get more village houses to increase happiness to 6.5. So we are getting uh, more and more uh, wooden huts upgrading to village houses. As we have the energy, we're going to need, of course, have some more energy coming along very soon. And we just went negative on energy, I figured. The tenants are peasants who, re who rent the land. Their living conditions are very low. They need only three farms next to them. Build a tenant farmer. Some constructions can replace others by building on top of them. For example, it is not necessary to destroy a farm to build a tenant farmer on top of it. Oh, well, that's useful. Tenant farmer and landlord's house unlocked. Okay, so let's, uh, let's first off, let's fix this energy issue. Uh, I would like to build a, you know, another lumber camp, uh, and it has to be this far away from that one. So maybe we could do it out here, and you can't that place to build. Okay, so we have to actually destroy the trees in order to build the lumber camp, and we might actually need to have a road coming out here as well. Oops, except that I messed up the road. Uh, lumber camp. And that'll increase our wood, and then we can add in another uh, lumberjack to um, somewhere around here. Can this one replace trees? No, cannot. I think we'll put it right there. I think that was the spot. I looked away and... Yep, there we go. That should give us a bit more power for now, and that'll let all the rest of these houses grow. So the next up is the tenant farmer. We unlocked at 400. Uh, it has a 50 food production and has 50 food storage, holds 10 residents and only provides five happiness and five tenant farmers in a one in a one tile radius, three farms in a one tile radius. So you can kind of see that they're going to be a bit snug here. I think we'll go here. like this and we can't go there because we don't have farms right here just yet but we have a couple of these built and then the land landowner needs at least four tenant farmers to produce build a landlord so so we need to continue building some farms here which is which is fine five there we go and we'll build a couple more tenants i guess i should start using the shortcut keys we we gotta let these build out first. Four. And I'm assuming these need to be pretty close to the road. Actually, they don't appear to be need to be anywhere near the road. They don't have a road restriction even. But putting them next to the road is kind of fun. So I'm going to do it. As soon as we get some more fields built here, we can do this one. Waiting on that one to build. I could probably use a little bit more... Uh, wood as well do that right there and i can do that other tenant farmer f3 oh this one's on a farm yet one two three those are all farms why you don't work thing you no Well, let's do a landlord's house. We can build this back from the uh, back from the road a bit. Uh, four or more tenant farmers in a five tile radius. Okay, good. So we could do like right in here. I think that's a good place. That has a production of 200, a storage of 200, and consumes 100 uh, work. So that means we need to have more workers. Good thing these produce... No, sorry, these don't produce work. Only regular houses produce work. Okay. You get more energy, you can now upgrade your lumberjack cabins into lumberjack houses. Yeah, let's do that. Uh, oops, I 
click the wrong mouse button. Right click or use a magnifying glass tool in the lumberjack cabin and you will see that it can be upgraded lumberjack house at 600 population if it has four houses nearby. Uh, that one's not going to be upgradable then, but this one will. Uh, we could put some houses out here though. Uh, reach 600 population and build houses near a lumberjack cabin to get a lumberjack house. So let's uh, build some more houses out here. I'm going to do three times seven, I think. Four, five, six, seven. Because it's three and then the space in the middle, which we'll, I'll show you what that's for in a little while. And then uh, that. Okay, so these did not replace the trees either. Housing must be H. Yeah. Okay. They're at least logical shortcuts. That's good. 574. We should be able to fill up these houses and get the population we need. We have plenty of food. Uh, we could use a little bit more um, wood, if anything, but we have plenty of food. Five ninety two. Five ninety eight. And go. There we go, 604. So now this should automatically upgrade to a lumberjack house. Four more squares with each six residents in a two radius. Oh, because it's across the street. So I need to take out a tree and put in a house. And we'll need to do the same over here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that times yeah that's fine those four four houses in here and that will um upgrade to a lumberjack house nice next be careful village houses consume more food than wooden huts so build a grain silo to be able to feed the population so the grain silo needs 700 population costs 30 work produces 14 food and consumes Five work. Okay. Wait, that's a field. I'm sorry. I was looking at the wrong thing. I was looking over here instead of here. Uh, costs 500 work and 200 wood. Yeah, we need a lot more wood. Can we upgrade the, the huts too? The lumber camps? No. So we just need to keep building those. Putting roads in the woods and building them as often as we can. Let's do that. Uh, times this money. Lumber camp needs to be right here. I wish you could build. I wish you could click and replace the trees. That would be useful. And I can put another one right here. One space from the end. That'll help with the wood production. Okay, this must not have a dense enough population. Yep, okay. And we probably need some more housing. I think I'm going to take out some of these trees, uh, but I need to put a road in here anyway. Put that road in. Do some houses on this edge maybe. That would be helpful. I think I'm gonna take out like, this many trees housing like that and that put us over the 700 which gives me the grain silo so the grain silo needs to be no grain silo in a six tile radius which is the which is the radius shown and two or more farmhouses in the same radius so I think I will start this uh, I can't get I could actually I wouldn't have put these where I put them. I can actually get grain silos on either side. Let's move some of these, or let's rebuild some of these tenant uh, farms. I want to move that one too. Can I build a tenant farm here? We have two of three farms. I don't understand. That's a farm. That's a farm, and that's a farm. Does somebody else not have? Oh, that one doesn't have. Yeah, they do. I'm confused.
I shouldn't have. I should have put them back anyway. Uh, that's fine. We'll do that. <laughs> that works just as well. And let's delete this one and these. That's going to actually damage this, isn't it? Yes, it does. Let's move you back one as well. Uh, field go here. And a tenant farmer can go there later. Put one there for now, though. And then let's do that uh, grain silo right here. Because then I can also do a grain silo right here. I did play with some of these ratios and, and whatnot in that uh, update 2 that I did. I need a few more farms, though, first. Or fields first. Do those. There we go. That's probably better anyway, putting them back a bit. And I don't have to worry about the road taking up a spot. Let's, let's actually redo these. Also. Uh, nope, down here. There. I goofed up. <laughs> Rain Sallow, you can go in there. Or you can't. Oh, two or more farmhouses in a radius. Okay, so you need to actually be... Different. Yeah, crap, that just became abandoned. Alright, we'll have to rebuild that. Let's do... And actually, maybe I should build that out here further anyway. That way we can have fields in between. This stuff's all new, so I didn't play with these ratios any. Let's do that. And that. And then the landlord's house can go there. I can put in a new... Farmhouse? Here. Farmhouses can replace the field also. And then we can do the uh, grain silo right here. Actually, I'm going to want to put in a farmhouse right here. Instead of the tenant farmer. Alright, I think that looks good for the beginning of the farm here. We got plenty of food coming in, plenty of work going on, and let's go next. Villas are luxurious homes where pe luxurious. Why did I say luxurious? Weirdly, uh, where people live well. To reach your villa, build four houses in a square shape, two by two, away from your city. At least five tiles from any other house, and with at least one park. If you build two parks, road will have trees. Remember that the process may take some time. Get a villa. Okay, so let's um, find a good place for a villa. That is at least five tiles away from other houses. Maybe like out here would be good. Uh, we could just take a road out there kind of thing. And build a nice villa out here. Take a road this way. And then we need parks. We have parks here. And we need at least one park next to it. Or within... No, we can put it there. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and do two parks so we get trees on the roads. It was a crappy road. And we already got the villa. That didn't take long. Uh, but we have a power issue again. So we need to... Why you not upgrade? Four more squares. One, two... Oh, I didn't do that one. I'll bet you it built before I could get in there. It replanted. The lumber camp replanted before I could get in there. That'll increase the power a little bit. Uh, from 40 and 250 to 60 and 350. Well, we can also do another one. And I do want to take out these trees all in here, because I want to build houses in this area. Uh, this here as well. Road first, I guess, would be good. And then we can do housing like this, times three, you and you. Boom. And then a uh, lumberjack cabin. Needs to be at least here, so we have to go here with it. Right next to. That gives us a little bit more power, and that will also hopefully give us enough tiles within range. Wait, where'd it go? Did I accidentally delete it? Did I have the... bulldoze selected or something? What's the... B? I didn't press B. I don't know. <laughs> Be a bug, I suppose. Early access game. Actually, alpha state game. Not even early access. Yep, that upgraded. Great. And we can continue to do more of those along this road. 
uh, if we need to. So we have our villa. Uh, we are now moving toward football pitches, AKA soccer fields. Uh, our unlock may reach eight happiness. Getting eight happiness at the moment may not be very easy. So you can follow the tutorial without building a football pitch, but you will see that there are different ways to develop your city. Some mayors are not interested in football pitches. Right click on your villa and you'll see the villa can upgrade into a mansion. To, but to unlock them, you need even more happiness than for the football pitches. Yeah, we need happiness of 10 to get to a mansion. To unlock an upgraded version of the parks, nice park, you need to reach four green areas. There's no linear evolution in Urbex. You can de decide yourself to, to have mo a more beautiful city and a, a sustainable city if you want and never build any coal plants. Get four city, four city beauty by building more parks to unlock nice parks. Okay, so we have two city beauty here because you have two parks. Let's just build um, two more parks here. Actually, no, let's build the parks where I was intending to build them, which is right here. To take out these trees too. There we go. Let's continue with our tutorial that pursues only material development. If you're playing on a map with the river, you can build a water mill that will give you energy. It should be built next to the river. It needs a bit of wood for constant repairs to keep it running. And I, but I think that's where we're actually going to pause for now because we have um, we've reached kind of the state of where the tutorial kind of used to be. Um, no, I guess we haven't because there's there's some of the industry stuff. But we're 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 at 30, past 30 minutes and we're diverging into an area uh, that is new to me in the game. We did get some paved roads, by the way. And uh, how do we get nice rural roads? Two or more green areas in a three radius, 60 or more residents. Okay, so more green areas, less uh, urban um, areas here. Yep, that's what it is. Okay, so uh, we're gonna leave this here. And in the next episode, we'll pick up where we've, we're leaving off and work our way into the next stages of the game. Thank you all for joining me and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.